Madam Chair, um, I want to talk about the Hunter uh, Power Project. Uh, in our October, November estimates, Mr Whitby, when you were here, you said that we expected a first power date of December 2023. Is that still the case? Whoever can answer. I'm happy to answer that. The most recent advice we've given to AEMO is that we've given a number of dates that AEMO have taken the most conservative of, which is that final power will be December 2024 and first power as early as May 24. When, sorry, May? First power, early 24, May 24. When this project started, when was first power and final power due? Uh, 12 months prior to those dates. Okay. What, um, what are we doing with the contract? Are we changing shifts? Are we changing mode? Are we doing anything to try and bring it on? So the good news is all of the equipment is in country, which significantly de-risks the programme from here. Uh, part of the challenges for the project were the, you know, we've talked about water, was the wet conditions at site. And I was there last week with my colleagues and we've now done the first pour of concrete, which significantly de-risks the build. So actually making progress de-risks the timeline somewhat. Uh, we yet to finalise the major works contract for the balance of the build, but the contractor is working on site uh, and, you know, working to a schedule. We've currently got a review underway to look at schedule and cost, which is, you know, we, we will share when we've completed it. I think uh, going there this morning in previous estimates, we were told that there was a, um, I think last estimates, there was a new business case being done for Curry Hydro. Is that complete? No, we're undertaking a project review. Uh, that's uh, not a new business case? Which we'll be providing to uh, the shareholder. And the shareholder hasn't been given it yet? We've not completed it, has yet. Do we have an ETA on the completion of that? Uh, we expect to complete it as part of the corporate plan process. When? Uh, we, I mean, I wouldn't want to give a firm date on that, but we're going through the process right now. It, a firm date? If I ask in six months, is it likely to have been handed over? Uh, yes. Um, under that review, are we looking at costs? Uh, we're doing a full project review. Obviously, it's important that we get progress so the, you know, the market has the power as soon as possible, which will inevitably involve the cost review. OK. What was the original cost at the beginning of the project? I think the original was $600 million. Right. I've heard numbers potentially in excess of $1.5 billion now. Is that... Pie in the sky, or is that possible? I mean, it would be premature to, you know, discuss what the review comes up with, but it won't be anywhere near like that number. It won't be anywhere near like that. It'll be under 1.5. OK. Uh, do, so we can't comment until we get that. Is there a <coughs> esti new estimate on the increase to run the plant? <coughs> Originally, it was 4.9 million, I think, a year, annually. Uh, we d I mean, we will include that in the review, but there should be no reason to materially revise that. Sorry? There should be no reason to materially revise that. OK. One of the uh, banes of contention last time in estimates was the source of the hydrogen. Have we located someone to supply the 30% hydrogen that will burn in the plant yet? Uh, to be clear, the project review is about delivering a plant that will run on gas or diesel in 2024. The prospect for hydrogen firing is subject to a separate review process that we're working with the shareholder on. So that isn't in the scope of the... No. Is that a review process that has costs associated with it so far? Uh, costs of doing the review or costs... Oh, no, of... costs, costs of making hydrogen ready. Uh, we're, 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 it's a bit premature to say what that review will come up with. But we're working with the shareholder to assess the hydrogen potential at the plant. I don't, OK. It's concerning for me that we do a review about a project and not put costs associated with it. Is that what you're saying might happen? Uh, um, I might ask you to clarify. The cost of doing the review or the cost of... The, Co the cost of making hydrogen ready. Yeah, well, that will be the subject of the review. OK. Um, so right now, we're looking at final power... December 24 on a gas and diesel plant. Yes. That's the current scope of work that's underway. Yes. No hydrogen. 
the plant is capable of burning 15% hydrogen with some minor uh, adjustments, uh, but the current plan in my focus is getting this plant available for the national electricity market as soon as possible. Okay. With the reason for the timing of the plan at the beginning, I understand whether it was to, uh, with Liddell coming offline to have that ready, I think Liddell's coming off online April this year. Uh, are you working with any partners with shareholder or anyone like that to look at uh, filling that gap in that summer of 23-24 now that we won't be uh, having this, this plant? I mean, we're not working specifically. AEMO would take that responsibility no. to determine supply and demand. Um, right, going through all of that on um, the, uh, the question I noticed to you, Mr Whitby, was asking about financial penalties in the contract for the delay of construction. It said there... Uh, Delays to incentivise on-team time delivery for the project. Details that those incentives are commercial in confidence. So there are incentives to finish early. Are there any penalties that protect the government and the, the Commonwealth and the shareholder if it runs this much late, 12 months late? Uh, depends on the, the nature of uh, the specific reasons uh, and uh, in terms of you know, wet weather, uh, construction, etc. No. Um, so, specifically on that, lack of incentives, don't count that, for a, any reason, if Godzilla comes out of the ground, I don't care what it is, and destroys it. I'm very happy to say that. <laughs> is there any penalties under any circumstances for the contractor for delivering this 12 months late? Um. For example, uh, if there was delayed delivery of uh, the equipment um, by Mitsubishi, yes, of course. Okay. Uh, but, but as uh, Dennis has said, the, the equipment uh, yes, okay. is on site, so uh, that, that, that risk itself has been retired. Okay. So, just to be clear, in the current review, is it the minor adjustments you mentioned to be able to make it 15% hydrogen burn, is that included or that is an additional timeline on top of everything else? That's not in the current review as to the schedule and cost of the existing scope of the plan. And to be clear, the promise Assistant Minister going in the government was this would be 30% hydrogen from day one. That was the position of the government coming into government? Senator, the government was uh, from opposition. We were provided with a range of information from Snowy Hydro uh, in forums such as this. And we relied on that in making the commitments that we made. We're now asking Snowy Hydro to give consideration to how they will fulfil those commitments, and that's the work that Mr Barnes is referring to. But on the evidence today, from day one in December 24, it will not be burning 30% hydrogen? Well, it's still subject to that work we're doing with shareholders as to the viability of hydrogen burning and supply chain. Yeah, Senator, can I, because it adds to the evidence that I gave a little bit earlier yes. on. So as as Mr Barnes has stated, there's, there's two things essentially going on here. One of them is a mid-project review of the Hunter Power Project, and that's about getting the Hunter Power Project to that first energy supply and then full commissioning, and that's the timeframes that Mr Barnes referred to. Second to that, there's also, uh, and I gave this evidence at the last Senate estimates hearing late last year, there's a business case that uh, Snowy Hydro is working with the government on around meeting the government's election commitment, and that's what Mr Barnes was referring to in terms of what would be required to get from what Mr Barnes has referred to, the 15 per cent, to the 30 per cent that the government committed to on commissioning of the hunt. That's different than the evidence I heard. There was a review going to the 30 per cent, but a business case review going forward. There is a business case being done on 30 per cent burn. No, is that what you're saying? Yes. That, so, so well, we. No, yes. So, as part of the, as part of the, and I, again, this was evidence that I gave late last year. Um, the government has requested of Snowy a business case on what would be required to meet that election commitment of 30% hydrogen on commencement. But you just said you're not doing that. And we're working with the shareholder as to the progress of that review and business case. Is it happening? Yeah, we've got teams working with well the shareholding underway. departments well underway. So, forget the business as usual up to 15% with minor fiddling stuff, is the potential cost of a 30% hydrogen ready plant by the end of 2024 in excess or around a $1.5 billion figure? 
be premature to comment on that. Yeah. Is it possible it could get that high? So, it's Senator, the, um, the, the, the election commitment uh, the government made was to provide $700 million in equity to get it to 30% hydrogen. The government, the shareholder, hasn't. We're not yet at the position where we've got a business case which would say that we would need to deviate from that estimate at this point. Okay. So we go back to where we were in October, November, is we've taken a plant to mix a peak of a summer of 23-24 that won't be ready on time, that has no business case to find hydrogen burning, and we haven't identified the hydrogen we can burn in it even if we build it. Is that correct? Are we effectively, I think your words, white elephanting a needed piece of infrastructure? Senator, I don't think that's a representation of the evidence that's been given. I think what you've heard is that there's a mid-program review that's underway of the Hunter Power Project, and when it, with its existing, the capacity that was intended around 15%, when that will be available, and you've heard the timeframes around that. In addition to that, there's a business case underway, which talks to how do you get from 15 to the government's commitment of 30% on commissioning. That is underway. We're working, Snowy Hydro is working with the government on that business case. Okay. Chair, is that all right to just finish out? Uh, yeah, can I maybe just follow up <coughs> um, on what you've been talking about? So your website says that the OCGTs will be capable of running initially on up to 10% hydrogen and then with some minor additional investment, minor additional investment, they'll be capable of up to 30 per cent. Is, is that correct? I mean, I think that probably needs updating, but we need to go through the review. Oh, it, it would seem so, given the evidence that you've just provided. Um, yeah. In so can you just confirm that that material on your website, as it stands today, was that there before the election? We'd have to take that on notice. OK. Um, but it is currently on the website and doesn't necessarily tally with what you've just provided in terms of evidence to Senator Cadell. We will provide on notice the detail of this, but I will add that the reason we chose the Mitsubishi gas turbines is they have the greatest potential to run on higher percentages of hydrogen. Uh, but obviously that is a... Uh, a process Mitsubishi are also working through from a technology development perspective. So the numbers may move around over time as Mitsubishi understand more of the capability of that plant. Mm. Just sounds pretty confident on the website. I've just heard a very different story. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, did you have some further questions? Go to Snowy 2.0 if you 